Assalamu alaikum, dear Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, alhamdulillah. Sayyidi, I'm the only one that tries to guide my children in the family. The rest of the family are Wahhabis, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Please advise, Sayyidi, please forgive me. Yeah, increase <laughs> the love. <clears throat> you know that the, the bees, and you look and there'll be many signs in nature's, in nature because we said this is a, the natural religion that the bees, they circumambulate the queen and without the queen they don't produce sweetness. You know that? If you take the queen out they don't know what to do and they don't produce any honey in their hive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they produce it because the presence of a queen and as a result they circumambulate that reality. So that love they have bonds them all. You take the queen the whole hive starts to move. And a wasp, which they're like, doesn't have a queen and produces no honey. And all it has is a stinger that hurts people. So what can you do about something that produces no honey, has no benefit and just stings people? So they're devoid of ishq, they're devoid of love, they're devoid of an understanding of love. And everything they want is to approach Allah through the head where Allah didn't ever say, I reside within the head and that faith is in the head and that this dead body goes back into the ground and what are you going to do with your head? And usually by 80 your dementia kicked in and you have no head. So it means that ishq and muhabbat and Islam and iman wal ihsan is in the qalb. Qalb al-mu'min baytullah. So those whom are devoid of love then what can you do? Nothing. So then you increase your love, you increase the madad, you increase the practices then that's enough. And you increase your love to the children so that their bond for you is stronger than the bond for anyone else in the home. They rely upon your love, your affection, your counsel, your reliance. So because that works. So if they're devoid of love they're very hard to love even for children. As they don't love the Divine then nothing on this earth loves them. So they generally have very harsh relationships with relatives, with children, with offspring. So that shouldn't be any competition. So if one in the house is loving… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then all will be attracted to the love and the sincerity of that individual. So they should have no, no difficulty. But if, you're, if you don't have love with the children and you're continuously fierce and harsh, you're breaking this bond and that's why we said this Western understanding of put them in a room, let them scream, let them lose all their natural instinct that you're my provider, you're my protector and then know that they're being attacked while they're screaming because there's other beings coming in with all of that energy that they're, they're transmitting and attacking them. So the whole of this relationship and its secret is love. So when you build that bond of love then the other people who don't operate with love you got no competition. That's why in our, in our way too we talk a lot about love and the other shaykhs don't like us. So we don't have any competition because anyone who likes to go around and hang out with people who don't like love, ahlan wa sahlan, go enjoy yourself. <laughs> Two days of that you're going to get sick and you come back to the oceans of love. So there's no competition.
You can't compete with people. Uh, you can, who, anybody want to sit with something that is, is not loving? No, it's hard. You say it's too much. So love is, you know, like a queen bee. It attracts a lot. And the, the khidmat of our students is the honey, right? They're producing honey where the other groups don't produce nothing, right? And when they don't produce anything and they begin to be belligerent and bad manners, means that you're breeding wasps. <laughs> Something what you're doing is not right because your jama become like wasps. They're aggressive and attacking everybody on the internet. But if you're like the queen bee, means you put out a frequency and a vibe of ishq and muhabbat of Prophet and a soft demeanor because they're like children that have to come for nurturing, what happens? These, these guys are making an immense amount of honey. They go out and they're doing this and that and thousands of wells. The proof is in the, the, the pudding, it's in what's manifested. It's not a… what is it? Physiology, it's not a, what Michael always talks about? Philosophy. Philosophy. It's not a philosophy, it's a proof. It's in the, the annual report. How many thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds of food that we picked up around the world? Yeah. So that, that's, the, that's the symbol of it. Allah said, if you do it with love, people will come. If you're going to do it by force and anger and, and, and criticisms and name callings and labeling, and it's not going to work. And then you're just going to produce a, a hive of wasps that as soon as you try to put a post in their, in their group, <laughs> wow, they start attacking and cursing and using horrific names against an Ahlul Bayt, a shaykh and, and a learned individual who holds an ijazah from Shaykh Nazim, Sultan al -Awliya. So what kind of manners these people have? You know, that proof is in that pudding, Tabasco. <laughs> We love you, Sayyidi. We love you too. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam. So, what is the age of maturity for children? What was the age you were saying? 18. 18. Okay. That you teach, 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 accompany them, and then be friends with them. So, when they start to go off, you know, nobody took the highway completely straight. Everybody went off road and off course and in all different directions. So Prophet is then warning for us, then keep their friendship. They're going to do things that are not pleasing to you, keep their friendship. As a result of their friendship, your love is still all around them, trying to guide them. If you break the friendship, that's as good as saying you're in the devil's hands now. And our, our life is busy taking people to paradise, not working for shaitan to take them to Jahannam. So the prescription that Prophet gave was immense in energy realities that create a bond of love, then create a bond of since they have love, you'll teach like the shaykhs because when they love you, they're eager to learn everything you have to, to teach with a soft voice. No screaming, no yelling, just softness, softness. And then as a result you've nurtured them, they'll go and start doing their own life and whatever Allah has written for them. But at least the friendship with them will keep your light all around them. So in their time of need and everybody enters into times of need that they'll be able to reach out to you because you've kept that friendship and that bond inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah But Sayyidi, how do we discipline them without anger? You should never discipline from anger. <clears throat> if Allah wanted to discipline you with anger, then every time you didn't pray, a piece of wood would fall off the roof of the house and hit you in the head. What are you talking about? Allah didn't do anything with anger, why would you do with anger? As soon as an anger entered, you did it wrong. So it's about disciplining the children on what's right and wrong in the actions. When they see anger and they see the, you know, the anger's coming, they know this is no longer right and wrong, this is just rage and, and that's when you have to stop. You go make wudu, pray your salat al wudu, ask for Allah to give you strength and then recalibrate yourself that I have to raise them with ishq and muhabbat.
that's a great jihad. Nobody said this was going to be easy. To, to, to raise and to do what Allah wants is uh, immensely difficult because now you're facing obstacles that are unimaginable, unimaginable in the school systems and in society and every direction imaginable they're trying to destroy the children. <coughs> I think you already answered this, but they said, As Salaamu Sayyidi, please tell me a remedy for anger. <laughs> You've got to get all the books. <laughs> the, whole, the whole energy teaching, everything is energy teaching, meditation teaching, everything. So get on the program, get the books, do the meditation, read the book on energy, the healing energy, angelic energy. If you read Urdu, we have the uh, Urdu version of the energy book and uh, angelic uh, qudra. It's the whole system because the, the most dangerous bad character is anger now for everything because anger will make all the bad characteristics ignite. So our life is again a continuous struggle just to drop the anger, drop the anger. So you make your wudu, keep yourself in wudu, do your salawats, do all your awrads so that that companionship of positive energy is with you. When you go out and go into public, go to work, go to these environments, come home and wash. Don't bring the energy back into the home environment and start to interact with everybody at home with all of this uh, crazy energy. So go home, immediately wash, do some of your namaz and then interact with the home, clean. So that not to bring that energy and now have confrontation with everybody based on that energy, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Isn't making TikTok videos haram? Forgive me for my ignorance and bad adab. Yes, if you're making a TikTok it's haram <laughs> because you're going to lose your modesty if you make TikToks. But if you're going to put onto their platform Islamic teachings and zikrs and our videos then alhamdulillah you're entering and throwing it into shaitan's play, playground. But definitely to make your own account and start interacting in there, it's a, it's a source of great fitna and all social media, your phone, everything. There's nothing excluded from that understanding. Not the verdict of haram but it's extremely bad energy. So we'll start with your phone. If it's for the purpose of immoral images and actions, well then that's already gives its answer. Then any social media, email, anything that people are doing, if it's for a purpose other than what is halal, then you're in a danger zone. So that's the purpose of teaching people that put out the videos, propagate the information that you're already there on these social media platforms, then put out the videos, put out on Facebook the videos, propagate the articles, do these good works in these forums and bring people back towards these realities and towards a, a sense of hope because so many of the wasps have scared people away from Islam. So they walked away from it and they went into the fields of shaitan. So when you take it and, and put out the honey and put out sort of this, this compassionate form of teaching, loving form of teaching, energy-based teachings, you may attract a lot of people back because, Rabbil Mu'mineen wa Rabbil Kafireen wa Rabbil Alameen that Allah is Lord over all His creation. So we are responsible to bring people back to the love and the ishq of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how can someone suffering from OCD get relief? Yeah, the OCD I think we, we, we've talked about that before and energy, these are all energy related. So you have to build your energy because something is waswasing to you. 
So we, we talked many times that if we believe that 99% of sicknesses are energy related, if you address not only the physical aspect of sicknesses with medicines and, and treatments, but to address the spiritual implications of what's going on. If there's energies around a person, because waswas and OCDs is, uh, is, is so interestingly involving waswas. Because somebody's hearing something, so from who? That your wash was not complete, your wash was not good enough, that go wash again, go wash again, go wash again, means the shaitan is too close to you. And you have to build your energy, do your meditation, do your spiritual practices. As a result of those practices it should be pushing away that fear, because fear is the opposite of faith, and that waswas. So then build your practices, build your energies, do the meditations. If that's not working and you require medicine then you take the medicines and then do the practices and begin to confront the fear. If you're scared of dirty things put your hand in the backyard, put it in the soil and begin to teach yourself, you're clean, not clean, it doesn't matter, go do your prayers. So you have to confront what's, what's coming after you. So. Don't, don't run from it, don't, don't give in to it and don't listen to it because the OCD is the same as the people whom are hearing things and then acting on it. They fight and yell and scream at everyone because they, they sense they heard something, they have an intuition towards something. No intuition from Allah is bad about somebody because Allah's attribute al satar and the angels are, are locked under these attributes of a sattar. They don't reveal people's faults. So it's not from Allah, it's from shaitan. Oh, you know that one is like this, He's, he ate your grilled cheese. Then you come out and say, oh, you know I'm inspired, you, you, you did that, then they start to fight. Means they listen to every whisper and they act on it. If you do that then the shaitan comes all the time around that person thinking this is a great person, as soon as we talk to them they go yell, scream, fight with everyone. And then they think, oh they're having inspirations. No, these are not inspirations because the sifat of Allah is not something breakable. When Allah conceals, He conceals. So He doesn't give people to understand something about someone else. That's something completely different. For guidance it's something, a completely different understanding. If Allah wants to give a guide, a, a way and an understanding on how to guide his servant but doesn't conceal their faults and to, to ridicule and to attack people with, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality of vegan meats? There is a desire from the companies and the World Economic Forum mm. to convert the world to vegan meat. Are they halal? Thank you for your guidance. Yeah. I don't know about this halal, not halal stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what aspect of vegan would be on halal. But if they later find out that there's a whole bunch of chemicals and additives and, and all sorts of bizarre elements then later they, they have to make a ruling on that. But until they, they, they come out and say, oh you know these chemicals they actually kill you to make this thing look like and taste like meat. And uh, it's not natural proteins and it's not uh, soy and, and it has many different elements within it. And too much of that soy they found that will destroy your brain and destroy your brain function. And uh, again anytime you try to imitate Allah you're going to have a big problem in your life. So our, our Western diet is… is contrived of corn syrup. Nothing is real in the supermarket anymore. So when you're eating unreal foods that are made from corn syrup, colored and painted in different things, of course everyone's going to be sick and eventually die and six out of seven is what they want gone. So uh, if you can get meat and eat regular meat, alhamdulillah. And if you don't like to eat meat too often then don't eat it that often. But uh, stay away from a lot of these products that, that are not going to be good for you 
in abundance. So before they were saying, everybody have a soy patty, then the founder was causing brain problems and all sorts of other medical problems and soy products. Then they came and corrected it, okay we can't. So you know a car that runs on gas, it runs on gas. You start throwing all the things in there, you're going to have problems. So Allah <coughs> designed us a certain way. So best to keep with the way in which Allah designed us that eat your meat, eat your balanced diets, stay away from your carbohydrates and sugars and lower those, those items within your body. Those are all poisons for the body. In which Prophet described, I, I fear the two whites for my nation and that's with salt and sugar. And so anything that's high in salt and high in sugars, those then Prophet described and advised for us to abstain and to keep away from, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Forgive me for my bad adab, how to bring back kids who are adults back to life and love for family if they are struggling in life? Yeah, that's… you got your work cut out for you. So you have to rebuild your connection of love and to rebuild the bond of love and to, you know, compensate for what went wrong and try to re-establish a connection of love and, and respect. And if you're trying to bring them towards guidance then it's best that you're already on guidance. So that when you reconnect the love then you set by example that your character is back to being uh, loving and that you're following this path and then you begin to teach them based on this path, I understood the wrong I did and I understand the bad characteristics. And then there's hope that they may follow what you're following. But if they're going to just listen to what you say but your actions are something different, it doesn't work for anyone to listen to someone who doesn't do what they're talking about. So we have to walk the walk and talk the talk, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah If the ones that love us are entitled to the light of the love we develop, then it's, is it the same true if we're battling darkness? Will our kids be affected by that? Yeah, of course. If you, if you have darkness all around you and negative energies all around you, do you think the, the children are going to be not affected by negative energy? Of course. So we have other talks on that, right? So when people distance themselves from these types of circles that Allah gave as a blessing and a ni'mat, then whatever negative energy adults bring into the home environment, then the purest light is going to carry that. Just the law of energy, you know, the, the negative is going to go to the more powerful positive. So who's the more powerful positive? The ones who came most recent from heaven. The one who's been walking this earth a long time and sinning, no, is not the, as powerful as the one whose feet just left paradise. So it's the children that carry the burdens in homes that don't do zikr, don't do spiritual practices because they're like a, a, a magnet or sponge for energy. People come and kiss them and hold them and all the energy is just going into them. So then you have to make like a wudu for the children and wash them and, and alhamdulillah and, and keep people from not kissing them and cover their body parts, cover their arms, cover their legs, don't expose their body parts because people's nazar and, and eyes and energies it will affect these parts of the body. Some people like when their the legs of the baby are big and chubby and they like to show to everybody, no cover their legs cover their arms and uh, that shields them as a protection for them. Don't let anyone kiss the child upon the lips and if anything kiss their feet and that's enough. Yeah. So you have to sort of shield the child, he has no voice. So they're depending upon the aqal and the understanding of the parents to protect them inshaAllah. And then wash them after people have left and so that they're in their wudu and that they're, they're clean with the energy and feel good with the energy inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, By giving too much love to the kids, won't it spoil them? 
How to balance? Can you please shed some light on that? You know, everything has to be a balance. I, I, I don't know if people give too much love, but you know, if, if we say, paint this white, you say, how white? <laughs> is it slightly white or more? But then become the nation of Nabi Musa <laughs> So we're, we're going to avoid that, that just be loving. Is too loving this much? Is loving that much? Is it yellow? Is it like <laughs> green? Is it greenish yellow? Yeah, so just keep it with love. Subhanahu rabbi ka rabbi nizat amma yasifun. Alhamdulillah. Wa rahmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa basira surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.